Hey, this is Connor, and welcome back to the Courageous Nerd channel for another interview. Joining me this time is actor Bobby Del Rio, chatting all about his film The Market, which he wrote and directed. If you enjoyed this interview or any of the others on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. Great. Welcome and thank you for taking the time to do this. Oh, thanks for having me. Great. And I guess, how have you been staying creative during the pandemic? Um, I've actually been extremely busy during the pandemic developing projects. So I have maybe 10 projects in development, mm. many of which have been started um sort of from the outset of the pandemic but i have some very high profile people attached and not everybody is comfortable shooting uh during the pandemic so a lot of what i'm doing in terms of production is on hold until i i don't know presumably there's a vaccine or the restrictions are fully lifted mm. to be free people feel safe um but i have quite a few things ready to go um I've also been, I mean, it sounds, you know, somewhat counterintuitive, uh, but watching television for me is actually a job. Sure. So I've binged, you know, like historically great franchises that I, I just never had the time to watch um, because of the investment of time required. But I've, I watched Lost in its entire Sopranos. Mm. I'm halfway through Game of Thrones. Um, and to have you know, those sort of contextual references at my disposal, I, I think definitely makes me a better writer. Right. And I guess, obviously, on that kind of note, what made you want to pursue a career in filmmaking? Um, it's a very good question. You know, it's funny because I actually had no desire to be a filmmaker, really, at any point in my life. Sure. Um, I, I, I trained as an actor. Um, mm. And then I became you know, a sort of award-winning playwright while I was an undergraduate student at the University of Toronto. Mm. And then sort of shockingly became a writer and an actor at the same time. Mm. Um, but my mother was a writer. So she studied at a very prestigious journalism school, um, which was called Ryerson's, that was the school. But she graduated from the Ryerson Journalism Program. So I grew up in a house where, and my dad's a, a lawyer, right? Right. So there was a lot of education in my house. Um, there was a lot of respect for education and language. So even though I, I never, I had no desire to be a writer, it was kind of in my, my blood a little bit. So I just became like a very critically acclaimed playwright while I was in university. In fact, I, I was the subject of a 30 minute documentary while I was an undergraduate student that aired across Canada on Bravo on television. Mm. So as soon as I came out of school, I was, you know, I sort of had all this publicity that I may or may not have deserved. I don't know. I was only 23 years old. Sure. Um, but then all, and then all of a sudden people kept asking me to write things and I kept getting attention and then, you know, just kind of went on from there. Right. And I guess um, let's discuss the market which you wrote and directed. And I guess how would you describe the film to anyone who's unfamiliar with it? Uh, usually what I do is I, I have maybe like three different descriptions and I, depending on the person, like I kind of cherry pick. Um, I, I think the safest, most generic way to describe the movie, it's, it's basically a, a gangster movie about Wall Street bond traders. Mm. Uh, it essentially serves as as an allegory for capitalism. Sure. I think it's often misunderstood because the language is so vicious, uh, but it was, you know, it's intentional and well-researched. Um, so, if, like, the characters are, are, are quite vicious and, and, you know, we we employ toxic masculinity as a sort of tool, which 
it's funny because some people will presume that the personalities of my characters are, I don't know, somehow a vehicle for my, you know, my own toxic masculinity, but it, mm. nothing could be further from the truth, right? I mean, it's, it's a, an excoriation of those values. Um, but it creates a lot of controversy, but, you know, it's okay. Right. And I guess between like, writing and directing, which did you find more challenging during the market? Uh, well, the writing was quite simple because, I mean, I, you know, at that point I had been a playwright for, when I wrote The Market, it was originally a play. I wrote it, I wrote, maybe that was the 10th or 15th play I'd, I'd written. I, I wrote the entire sure. script. So it, it was like five days, I think it took me to write it. Um, and when I produced it, it was, um, you know, it was sort of this underground hit. Like we had so much momentum and many people loved it. In fact, it was the audience that wanted it to be a movie. I, I had that thought had never even entered my head. Um, but, you know, because it's, you know, sometimes I would describe it in theater as Glenn Glary, Glenn Ross with guns. Um, it, it sort of naturally lent itself to cinema in a way that I didn't intend. So I maybe had 50 to 100 people during our theatrical run tell me that this has to be a movie. And uh, that's actually where the journey began to turn it into a movie. But by the time mm. we actually made the movie, I mean, the script is 99% identical uh, to the to the theatrical script. So I, sure. I really didn't do much to, to adapt it. But when I directed it, I, I really never directed a film before. So yeah. that entire part of it was, you know, I mean, it, I just learned from my team like every single day. Yeah, and I, I guess you kind of touched on this and the fact it was originally uh, like a play, but how different would you say your first screenplay draft of the market was to the final shooting draft? Uh, almost identical. I mean, it, it was so similar that I don't even know if I even had... <laughs> like mm. an actual screenplay version of the market. So when we did, so when we did the play, the two leads are, are played by Julian Dezotti and Kyle McDonald. And they were the two leads in the play and they're the two leads in the film. Both of them are brilliant actors, um, good friends of mine. And so when we did the movie, um, I mean, they already knew their lines, they knew the characters, they, to be honest, I did very little to direct their performances because they were both so good and they both knew every single line. Yeah. I mean, they, they knew the lines better than me. I mean, I'm like, especially, especially Kyle, right? Like he's, his, I mean, he was, he's a, you know, really classically trained actor. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went to theater school together, so we're, we're both classically trained, but he, he really did emphasize Shakespeare in his career. Sure. So he, he, he just, it's funny. There are many times where I was like, I think this is the line. He'd be like, no, no, it's actually this. And he was always right. Mm. Um, so it just, it made it very simple. So by the time we went to shoot the movie, I had to replace two of the actors. Right. Um, just, just because the two actors who were in the play were unavailable. Um, but it was a very simple transition. I mean, essentially it was all ready to go. And then I just had to incorporate the cinematography. Right. And I guess for anyone who has written or is considering writing a screenplay uh, or even a stage play, how important do you think hearing the words spoken um, by actors, how important do you think that is? I mean, it's essential. I, I'm mm. biased because, you know, my training and background is theater. So I think I was maybe 37 years old when I directed the market and I'm 42 now, um, mm. which is quite uncommon because, you know, like I, my next project, I actually, I'm attached as the, um, you know, the star of a couple of feature films with very young sure. filmmakers. And um, they're, it's funny because they're in their early twenties and they're making feature films. And I didn't even attempt to make a feature film until I was 37. Mm. Um, so, but I spent many, many years in theater and for us, like, development readings are essential. I mean, there's a lifeblood of story, in my opinion, is that you need actors to breathe life into your words or you don't know if your words land. 
Right. And I guess, uh, who would you describe as your creative inspiration, whether it's as a writer or as a director? Uh, I mean, I, I, I really love all, you know, sort of writers. I mean, I have a theater degree, so it's, mm. you know, I've been influenced by many, many of the top playwrights, but I also worked as a film programmer for five years. Sure. And so I've, I watched a lot of movies as well, but I, I will say for the market specifically, I've certainly been influenced by David Mamet, um, mm. Neil, Neil Labute, Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese. Um, but, you know, more broadly, you know, people like Tom Stoppard. Sure. He's a genius. Woody Allen. Yeah, I think that's enough yeah. for now. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And I guess, obviously, as, as you mentioned, and as, um, you know, your IMDb kind of says, you have a background as an actor and uh, how much of a focus is acting for you right now? I have an interesting career because, um, you know, I think we do have a lot of hyphenates now, but I'm, I'm, I'm really a hyphenate. Like I, mm. I have odd combinations of, <laughs> you know, sort of commitments to projects like some projects i'm the writer director like the market some projects i'm just an actor some projects you know i'm the star and i'm writing the screenplays you know some i'm just directing some so it, it i i'm as much an actor as i am a writer as much as i'm a director i think it's just whatever makes sense creatively um I, like i'm happy to play a lead role or i'm happy to write the script or I'm happy to co-write the script i'm happy to direct for me it's about helping the work so whatever makes the most sense for me uh, in terms of contributing to the product creatively like that's what i'll do right so have you ever been in a situation where you've kind of combined all three of those creative pursuits obviously the writing the acting and the directing um not at not at the professional level um, sure I've done things in school. I, I obviously I know how to do all those things. I have, mm. you know, a, a pretty I'm pretty established uh, equally. I think as an actor, writer, and director. But for me, the reason I haven't done all of those things at the same time, and I'm not sure I ever will, quite frankly, right, um, is that act when you when especially if you have a lead role, when you're the actor, you you kind of have to view the work through the lens of that character but when you're the director you have to be more objective about the larger puzzle sure so you can't really do those things simultaneously um so i've net like and i just think that you're going to compromise something you're either going to compromise your performance because while you're supposed to be playing your role you're actually what paying attention to other people so you're not fully invested in the acting or you you're going to compromise the directing because you're only looking at it through the lens of the character and film is different than theater because at least in film you can look at takes but then you're going to slow down your workflow and sure i don't know it just for me it's very difficult to rationalize doing all of those things um and sort of achieving you know your utmost potential while doing them so I, I probably will only do a maximum of two of those three major positions at the same time sure and i guess um like in terms of the market do any days while shooting like stand out as being particularly challenging or particularly um i guess well executed if that makes sense uh, yeah, for sure. So the most challenging days for sure were the two days where we shot um, one third of the entire movie. <laughs> right. Um, so I believe we shot 30 pages in two days. Um, now, we had a great crew that was willing to have a long day because um, one of those days ended up being 16 hours long. Sure. Um, but, you know, in, in the movie, we have we have these two very, very long dialogue scenes um, that, you know, are, are essential to the plot and all, lots of like, you know, they're pivotal, pivotal scenes. Right. 
Mm. Um, so we, you know, and we rehearsed the movie like a play. So, you know, those scenes, especially I'm very, very specific as a, as a writer, right? Right. Cause I'm a, I was a playwright. I'm still a yeah. playwright, but, and when you're, but when you're a playwright, what I find in film and television is, is people are so willing to change the dialogue, but as a playwright, like the dialogue is the lifeblood of your craft. So you're very, very meticulous about it. Mm. So because we were so studious um, and rehearsed, um, it's almost like each of those scenes I approached as the execution of a 15 to 20 minute play. Right. So in a way, we had to perform two 20 minute plays perfectly on back to back days. Um, but I, I do think that everybody pulled it off. Um, and in those scenes, you'll see that where they're playing board games, there's a, a poker scene that's quite notable in the film. And then um, and then the, the movie, all the actors I thought were excellent. Our crew was excellent. Um, I'm extremely proud of the film. It was a, it was a really great team effort. Right. And assuming that this discussion is the first time uh, someone might have heard of the market, where could they find out more information or or potentially uh, try to see it? Um, well, in the UK, the market's available on Amazon Prime. Mm. So it's on Amazon Prime in the UK and in the United States. And then in Canada, we're available on Vimeo On Demand. I think actually it's also accessible in the US and the UK through Vimeo On Demand. But, yeah. Sure. And I suppose other than the market, are there any other projects you'd want to mention? Um, I have a new project that we will be shooting in early 2021 called The Cult mm. with a K sure. uh, that I've co-created with Megan Larson, who is a 22-year-old prodigy. And um, we wrote it together. She'll be directing. I'll be playing one of the lead roles. We've assembled um, a cast of some of the very best actors in the country. Um, We'll be releasing the cast in early 2021, but basically we're ready to shoot. So as soon as COVID is over, we will go into production and I'm extremely excited about it. I think it's going to do really well. Right. And this is actually the last question I've got here. And obviously you're mentioning with COVID, everyone's kind of living in tough times. So what advice would you give to fans of your work or of you personally? Stay positive and stay safe. Um, I think it's going to be over before you know it. And then I think it, we're going to have really amazing times ahead. Um, I'm definitely preparing um, for a busy 2021. Mm. So even though I know things are tough right now, I do think once we get through the winter, it's going to be really, really great. So now is a very good time to get organized. <laughs> Thank you.